So if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you to check out another one as well on how to undo styling after clicking the same button in JavaScript. So this is another item as well that you might want to know because it's very related to what we did here so far. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers question, which is how to use on click with query selector in JavaScript. And this question came from one of the viewers who've been watching this specific video about how to add on click to button in JavaScript. So in here, the question came from School of Fish. A special thank you to School of Fish for asking the question. And this is what the School of Fish question was. Can you please make a video on how to use document.querySelector all for this? And, and for this, they're referring to this specific video here. And then after you had another question and how to make this button effect stay even if the user refreshes the page or goes to a different one. Thanks. All right, so since these are two separate questions and the second part will be far more complicated, we will be using cookies for that. And I will make a separate video for that because we can do that differently. And of course, cookies are only suitable if you're going to use not important information. For example, like changing colors or color preference like light and dark, but not users, email, passwords, and important personal data. Never use cookies for that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this item here. I'm going to explore how to do this because the query selector all oh, is very powerful, but you might be confused because it doesn't work if you just do only query selector. So let's start and explore how to do this. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to put in some basic paragraphs here, or let's say here we have H1 and this will have a text. And what we can do here is we're going to give it a class name. And the reason why I'm going to give it a class name is because this will be important with the query selector. Because with the query selector, we can select every tag. This is basically these, these are called the tags or selector. And selector is a common term in JavaScript or CSS. But basically on a condition of the specific class here. So I'm going to copy this and this one here. So we have in total, and let's make sure that this is a paragraph. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that, sorry. Make this a paragraph, paragraph, and a paragraph. However, this one will not only have font color, because you can see here, we have a basic HTML file with some CSS, and that's it here. And let's say this one will be also bold color, or bold font. And we could say here, dot bold font, and we just say in here, font weight bolder. All right, so if I save this now and refresh, you can see here we have this bold text here, but this is by default because it's an H1. And then we have a paragraph, and then we have another paragraph, but this one has a bolded font. So now we can start because what we should have is here basically two or three buttons. And this will become eventually important because with that we can start to change the color on click. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create your button, and this button here. Uh, let's give this the text of blue or no, not blue, but let's say this is black and then we say here on click and with on click basically when what we want to do here is when we click this button something should happen or something should happen in JavaScript we're triggering something so and the reason why this on click is here because this on click you're communicating you're indirectly this is what we're doing we have here HTML code but HTML code doesn't communicate with JavaScript and JavaScript cannot communicate with HTML by default. It's like separate code, so they don't understand the language. So we need to be like a communicator with one and the other. So how do we, uh, how are we able to communicate basically with this kind of code here? We say in this button, if we click on HTML, this specific button, then we want to do something, trigger something in JavaScript. And what will we trigger? Well, we're going to create a function here. So this function will be called change color. And then in here, this change color is in parentheses, or sorry, not in parentheses, but in quotations. And here we have the parentheses. And here is called, we will have an argument. And this argument is basically the value what we want to give the text or the font color eventually, which will be black. So when we click on this button, we will change the color from blue, which is by default set here, 
in CSS into black. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab this here, and then we say here function, and then what I want to do here is I'm going to paste in this, and we're going to use here. Here, this will be eventually the, the parameter. We call this a parameter, and the value itself is the argument. So the parameter is called, let's say, colors, which is just the text color here. That's the parameter. Basically, it's this here. You can see the moment we click on this, and let's make this here console log, so we can log our item in our developer tab. So we're going to copy this color, put it in here, just to show what's going to be displayed, this specific value. So if we're going to open up our developer tab here in Google Chrome, I'm going to refresh. We have this button here. If you click on it, you can see now we get black here, indicating that it recognizes this specific text here. So let's copy this. Put another one here. Let's make this red. And we say here, the font will be red as well. Or this is the text for the button. And if we click on this, we say here black, red. You can see here, now we have this. All right, so once we have this, sorry about that, there was just a ringing. However, so we have these colors here. So this validates right now, red and black. So what we want to do now eventually, because then we validated this and this works. What we want to do now is we want to grab every item here. If you did query selector, it will only select one specific selector with that certain condition. Now we want all of these to change color into whatever button we select or click on. So we say here the following, we say a document dot. And what does the document mean? meaning? Basically, this is what we call the DOM or the DOM. And basically, that is just the HTML document itself. It says basically here DOM. So we say search everything in this document, which is this specific document here. And then we say the following here. Query, and query means search, selector. And selector, as I indicated, that's basically the tag. But in JavaScript and in CSS, they call them selector. And then we say all, query, selector, all. And then it's basically what we're going to search is search for every selector with the same condition here, which is a string. We say dot, and dot indicates class. Very important. If you have an ID here, then you would have like this, or oh, sorry, you would say ID ABC. Then you would do here ID. However, with ID, you cannot select all because ID must be unique, meaning you can only have one ID on a HTML uh, document, one with the same name. So we say a dot for the class, and I'm going to grab here the class name, which is the font color. So once we did this, you will notice if you would just say here, and then we say your style dot color to change it, and then we grab here this color uh, parameter, you will see that this will not work. And the reason it doesn't work is this is not the way how we can assign it. If I save this, you will see here refresh. If I click on this, you get these errors here. Un uncut type error cannot set property. And the reason why you cannot set property here, because right now you're now working not only with one specific item, you're working with three. So we can find this, but if I just, let's comment this out for now. I'm going to grab this. So I'm going to explain here now slightly the array item. So let me put in here some enter so we have more space. There we are. I'm going to put this back here. We're going to grab all of this. But then if I say here the following, so watch this here. If I say here dot length, and let's do the console log on this as well. So we say console.log. And then we say length, save, and refresh. And we select on this. You can see now it shows three specific items. And this JavaScript, we're not allowed to do like this with this because it doesn't recognize which item you want to pinpoint. We need to specify specifically which item we want to give it a color. However, if you want to color them all three, you say, well, hold on, why do we have this? All right, so I'm going to show you here. So these are basically what we call arrays, but it's not really an array, it's called a note because it's deeper than an array because it has three items and it can go deeper within that specific item with the text, note, etc., etc. And we will not go deep in this because note can be confusing. Just imagine 
like see it as an array, it recognizes there are three items. So how do I say there's three items? First of all, it's red. the length indicates this. But now I'm going to do this, and then you will see, oh, let's copy this one specifically. We put this in here, and then we say here, note array number one starts with zero. Remember, an array starts with zero by default. But note number one, or with this font color, the first one would be h1 here. So if I say this, and then we say style.color equals colors, we save this, now you will see that it will update one specific item. If I select this, you can see now the title tag, or sorry, not the h1 tag, automatically adjusts it. So how can we do them all together? You might say, well, we can do this then, we have here this one, and we will do like that. But this, of course, doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to show you. If you do this, now all three are being colored. This is nice, but this is not what we want. And the reason why we don't want this, we want to make sure it loops. Because imagine this. Imagine later on you have another paragraph or another item. You have more here, and if we save this, and now we click on that, we get a problem. So how do we make this what we call dynamic? that it will be automatically calculated. We have the length here, but you need to understand this. We have length, it shows number six here now, and if we will remove these three, we have only three. So we have three here, and this is really important why I'm, I'm being very uh, elaborative with this, so I want to make sure you really understand this, or elaborate explanation. Because this is really, this is the most important part. We have here zero, one, two. That means that these are arrays. You see here, we have three items, but the array, the array value, or the node in this case, because it's a node, but it's very similar to an array. You can imagine those two are almost identical. It starts with zero, and here the third value it ends with number two. Why? Because the default is zero. So zero is one, and this is the second one, and the third one in the length. But it counts from zero. So if you want to color them all, what we need to do here is a very simple for loop. So we're going to use a for loop here. And in this for loop, we're going to do the following. We're going to say here, let. And the reason why we're going to let, because we're going to loop through the same variable consistently, so we cannot use cons. Make sure you use let here. And there's an equal, uh, let i, sorry, equals zero. Semicolon, and then we say i, we want to make sure that we loop the i, and we want to make sure that the i is basically uh, s smaller or equal to, uh, equal to, uh, sorry, this one should be smaller or equal to this. And this will be eventually the length here, which is number three. So we can grab this one. But if we do number three, as I told you earlier, we get the error because we have here zero, one, two. So we say here, we have this dot length, then we say minus one. So we always do minus one. So once we have this, and then we say a sem semicolon and an i plus plus. So basically we're looping through. And we're using an i, you can use anything, but very common is to use an i, y. i stands for iteration. And iteration, if you would look in the dictionary, what it means, it means repeating something. And a loop repeat something a number of time. An iteration is repeating something a number of time. That's why I use the I. But you could use L, X, whatever, anything you want. But I is the common term for that. Then we have here these brackets or uh, curly braces. And in here, what we need to do basically is this, what we did here manually, we're going to do it here. We put it in here, but this zero is now referred to this I value. So we say here, I, and then we save this. We save this, refresh, let's check here. Now, automatically, it starts to adjust them. So now what we want to do here, let's copy this again. And I'll just change this one. This should not be the same ID, of course. And H1 tag should only be once on a, pair, on a uh, document as well. So I'm going to put in here multiple. So you can imagine if you have multiple, refresh here. And now if I click on this, and now you can see the color is adjusting automatically for every item because it loops through it. It will understand here with this specific loop length. We can do this here as well. If we do here console log, let's do console log here. And we can grab here the length. We save this. 
and refresh and you can see here now you can see here it recognizes automatically all of these items here and this is basically how you can do with an on click item